You're listening to 7-Minute Stories with Aaron Califato. 7 Minutes has grown so quickly and we couldn't do this without you. So please, keep visiting our website at 7minutestoriespod.com, keep sharing your favorite episodes on social media, and of course, keep subscribing and leaving those rad ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts. Now, on to the story. This episode, Chinatown. So the other night I just finished recording an episode of Seven Minute Stories and I turned off my mic and I've started this new tradition after I record one that I would go on my computer and I'd look at the analytics on my website of the last episode. See, this has opened up a can of worms. This has opened up some problems and all artists and creatives face this when you create a project and you put it out into the world. It's always fascinating to see it grow or not grow and then try to strategize how to do that. But luckily I've been watching each episode I put out there. I'm getting more and more listeners from all over the place, all over the uh, the U.S. especially. And and I'm always curious as I'm looking at the, the analytics, which is telling me two basic things. One, an IP address, which I'm not really interested in, but the city from where that person is listening from or visiting my website. And as I'm scrolling, I'm starting to get really tired because it's about one in the morning. But I'm I keep catching this pattern. And I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And I see an IP address and a city keep reoccurring. It's Los Angeles, California. And then I was startled by my phone. It rang and it's one in the morning. And it's like, it's not going to be a a telemarketer. So I don't know who this is, but I I look at this foreign area code and I kind of decide whether I'm going (laughs) to answer it or not. But I finally do. And it's this woman on the other line. And she says to me, hello, I'm calling on behalf of Jack Nicholson. And he has heard about your seven minute stories and it all connects. It makes sense. I'm like, holy shit, the Los Angeles IP address. And and then I, but then I said, there's no way. And I thought, is this Corey, my girlfriend? Are you just playing a trick on me? So I was like, Hey, what are you doing? I know I got to get up to bed. I know I'm working too late. And she says, no, seriously, I'm calling on behalf of Jack Nicholson. We get this all the time. Even if you hang up, I'm still going to call you back, sir. So I was listening and she said that Jack Nicholson has been listening to your seven minute stories and is interested in having a conversation with you. He'd like for you to come out to LA and meet with him and talk about your process and talk about future projects that you can work on together. You've got to be fucking kidding me. So I go to sleep that night. I don't tell Corey, I go to sleep and I go through the whole day without mentioning this to her. And then later that night when we're, When the kids are asleep and we're kind of getting ready for bed, I kind of go through my day and I say, yeah, I did this and this, all these mundane things, right? And then I said, oh, and by the way, Jack Nicholson wants us to come out to Los Angeles. And she is floored. We are excited. We're screaming. We're hugging each other. And we get on a plane and we fly out to L.A. Even though I hate flying, I had to take drugs to do it. I mean, if it was my choice, I would drive across the country for three days. But when Jack Nicholson tells you to come out there, you do it. And so we get out there. We get to the airport. We're in LAX. Uber comes like clockwork, picks us up, drives us out into the hills. And I don't even remember the street, but it pulls up to this giant gate in this mansion. And I get this text on my phone and it says, enter this code back to me via text and the door will open. So a Just like it says, a code comes up on my cell phone. Corey's looking out at the mansion, smiling. We can't believe the life that we're living. And I text back this code and the mansion gates open. And our Uber takes us in, drops us off. We open the front door, go inside. And I look down this huge hallway and I see two feet crossed, a golf shirt and khakis and sunglasses. And I hear what I think is Miles Davis's version of It never entered my mind playing on the surround sound and Jack Nicholson speaks and he says, I'm so glad you came out. I've been really fascinated with your stories. I couldn't fucking believe it. Are you serious? So I go, I said, I don't know how, how you heard about me. This is so fascinating to me. He goes, well, you know, the internet is a fascinating thing and I've just been on it for days and days going down rabbit holes and I found your stories. And then we just talked for hours about my stories and his acting career 
And I told him how he influenced me as a kid because he did the narration for these Aesop Fable uh, cartoons. One of them was like how the camel got his hump and the other one was how the rhinoceros got his skin and how his voice was just incredible and how his career and his, his, his perspective on life and acting. And we just went for hours. And then he tells me, he says, do you mind if my friend Sean comes over for a while? We're going to do some acting exercises. And I was like, Sean, he said, Sean Penn. Do you know him? I said, yeah, I've heard about him. Are you serious? So next thing I know, Sean Penn, me, and Jack Nicholson are doing these acting exercises together where we're screaming at each other. And he says, take my space. And I say, take your space. And he says, take my space. And they're smoking cigarettes and I'm screaming. And it's the greatest moment of my life. And Corey's smiling and she's crying. And I can't believe it that I just let out this scream like Howard Dean. I'm like, yeah. And I start coughing. <coughs> I start coughing so badly that I feel like I'm going to pass out. And I have a hard time breathing. And next thing I know, I, I just go black. And then I feel this wet substance on my face, which I then realize is my own drool. And I open my eyes and I'm laying face down in my studio, in my home, in front of my microphone with the computer screen glaring on my face and the analytics from all the listeners of last episode of 7 Minute Stories. And it appears to me at this moment that I had dreamt all of this. But just like so many dreams, it's like that moment where it goes from one moment to 10 minutes. In fact, you spend 10 minutes convinced that what you dreamed, that vivid experience, was real. I was so convinced this happened to me that I started scrolling through my phone, looking for the text message from Jack Nicholson's assistant. I'm scrolling. I can't find it. It's nowhere. And as each time I start searching for evidence of this relationship in this moment, I start realizing that I had had this most horrible, cruel dream. But even more, I had a question. One, who is this person in Los Angeles listening to my stories? And two, why in my subconscious was I so obsessed and am so obsessed with Jack Nicholson hearing my stories? And the only line that came to mind through this whole ordeal was, forget it, Jake, it's Chinatown. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks to our new partners at Evergreen Podcasts and the rest of our team. Audio production by Ken Went, original art by Pete Whitehead, and I'm Corey Burse. Remember, a new story comes out every Thursday evening. Perfect for listening then or on your Friday morning commute. Also, did you guys know we now have super cool shirts available? You can purchase yours at 7minutestoriespod.com. I love mine. It's super comfy. You should probably get one too. Thanks again for listening.